So everybody, iPadOS 18 public beta has officially released. So now if you want to, if you want to take the plunge and take that risk, you can actually absolutely for free sign up for the account and put iPadOS 18 on your supported iPad. So in this video, what I want to show off is 10 different things to try out first off on iPadOS 18 that are really kind of the more prominent features that you're going to be wowed by and at least you're going to enjoy when it comes to using iPadOS 18 on your iPad, regardless if it's an iPad Pro, iPad Air, iPad Mini, or iPad 10 generation. But without further ado, let's get right into this video and before we get started if you guys want to join the channel membership I'll leave that link down below and that gives you some perks like being able to download these nice wallpapers as well as some live podcast shows and much more but let's get into this video everybody Well, all right, everybody, let's hop right into this video. And I do want to preface this by saying I am using the latest M4 iPad Pro, but everything that I'm going to speak about here with iPadOS 18 will work with any supported iPad that's running iPadOS 18 or can support iPadOS 18. All the Apple intelligence stuff is still not available and it will be reserved for the M-powered iPads and newer. So keep that in mind. But for now, everything I'm going to mention will be doable on any iPad that's supporting iPadOS 18. So let's start off with the number one thing that you should actually get started with, which is, as you can see, the dark mode icons and the customization to the home screen. So if you long press on your home screen and you go into your wiggle mode or jiggle mode, leave a comment down below of what you think it's called. And then you press edit. Your first new option is going to be this customized button. So if I press on this customized button, you now have a bunch of new options. So first and foremost, you have your auto automatic, which basically puts your iPad into dark mode or light mode, depending on if you have your current native dark mode set up, or you can go directly into dark mode. You can go back to light mode. As you can see, all the icons go right back to what they were originally like, as well as the widgets over here. And then you can go into tinted. Tinted by default is going to color match based on your background and your wallpaper. So you can see that it looks like Apple took kind of this horizon look and the sunset, use that as a main form factor use that as a main color to tint all my icons and you can see that it's down here and you can actually change this up and kind of add to it whatever you want so first you can change the saturation of it by moving this all the way down to dark and white and moving it all the way to that same orangish hue or burnt orange or you can even just customize it to whatever color you want if you don't want to go with what apple gave you and then also to continue to customize it and you want to select maybe another main color you can tap on the color picker right here and then drag it across so maybe you want this like blue dark blue hue to be the the main color and then it's going to adjust accordingly a couple other things to take into account is going to be this little sunrise button. So basically it's going to lighten or brighten your background depending on what you choose. I like to go dark mode and then I also like to go with the light still turned on just to give you a little bit of a brighter look. And the last thing that they actually gave us the ability to do is go to large icons. So the first thing that you notice with the large icons is that they are a little bit bigger. You're not getting any extra or less screen real estate in terms of how many apps you can put in each row and each column. But you might notice that the names are actually gone. So the names were already gone on the dock by default. So as you can see, the names on the app icons are gone if you go into that large mode. I personally don't really like that, so I'm going to long press here, press edit, customize, go back to the small mode, and then you can see that all the names are actually back on there. So that is a new customization feature for the home screen that's going to iPadOS 18 as well as iOS 18. Now to continue with this home screen situation, let's go into Control Center because that is the next big revamp that you can see right away. So Control Center looks a little bit different. Yes, this kind of formula is still there in terms of what it looks like. So as the opacity there, it still blurs out the background, but there's a few things to kind of take into account. First and foremost, you have a power button that can be hit and turned off. So if you hold this down, it'll go into turn off mode or you know, again, slide to power off. I'm gonna press cancel. And then the second thing you notice is this plus button. So this plus button allows you to add more widgets into your Control Center, which we'll touch on in a little bit. But the next thing you can kind of see is that there's actually some other icons over here. So if I swipe up, you have multiple pages in terms of what's playing now. You can also control other speakers in your house if that's something that you have the ability to do. If I continue to swipe down, then you have all your HomeKit accessories that are placed on here so I can control these easily from here as well as go directly to the home screen. And something to consider is that if you swipe anywhere on the screen, it'll move around. So you don't have to like go right here. You can actually move anywhere on the screen. But then lastly, you have all your connectivity as well as a new way to interact with them with these little arrows. So instead of long pressing on them, which you can still do, but now you can just tap on these arrows and it'll show up all the Wi-Fi or the Bluetooth connectivity, airplane mode, VPN, all that good stuff. But then to customize your control center, you just press this little plus sign right here, add a control, and then you have this whole new library. Now again, we are in beta, so like these UI elements are a little bit broken, but everything works as intended. You swipe through here, you can press whatever you want. So let's say I want to add a quick note over here. You can have a completely new page in terms of how many widgets you want. And then you have this little bottom right button or the bottom right kind of pull tab to make it bigger, smaller, and make it to at least a two by two, a two by one, or a one by one. 
So each widget will interact differently in your control center, but that's just an idea of what it looks like. And again, this is something that I would play with right away just to get an idea of what it's like, but that is gonna be your new control center in a nutshell. Now let's get into the brand new Photos app because this one, you know, you either love it or you hate it. I haven't seen much in between here when it comes to what people think. So now the Photos app is just in one clean view. There's no more tabs on the bottom. There's no, I mean, there's still a menu on the left-hand side that you can pull up but there's no bottom tabs to go through maybe your library or your memories and things like that. Everything is done right here. So this is gonna be your main and most recent. And you can see there's little tabs down here similar to your home screen that you can swipe across. So you have your featured videos, some trips. You also have your favorites. You have videos as well. You have your customized, so you can actually customize to show different kind of categorized photos and things like that. Then there's also this recent day. So this breaks down pretty much every single day that you take pictures. Then also categories, which is good to see your pin collections, your albums, memories. So everything from your old photos app is still going to be there, but now it's just laid out a little bit differently, which is cool to see. And then lastly, you do have some more utilities. So if I tap on utilities, there's actually a bunch more that you can put up here. You have your hidden, your recently deleted, you have your map. And then again, like I said, there's just a different view when it comes to all your utilities and the different categories of media types you have in your photo library. So go in here, play around with it because there's also if I'll swipe here, and let's say I wanna click on this, which is gonna be a thumbnail for a future video, the look and feel is now a little bit different. So you still have all your customization stuff down here, but it just looks and feels a little bit different, but everything that you're used to is going to be there. There are some additional things to kind of play with and learn. We do have some in-depth videos of a complete walkthrough of the Photos app coming very soon, but I just wanna let you guys know that the Photos app is something that you should definitely play around with as you move forward throughout iPadOS 18. So now let's get into the brand new application, the calculator app. So this is the calculator app for the iPad. For the most part, it's gonna be very similar to what you're used to, right? You have your basic version, which is what we're all used to. You then have a scientific calculator, which is here. And then you have your math notes. Now I did find out that math notes is available on iOS as well, but it works much, much better with your Apple Pencil on the iPad canvas. And it's exactly what it sounds like, everybody. I mean, it's amazing. I wish I had this, you know, when I was in high school to be able to solve formulas and graph things, but if we start a new one, so it is very simple to use, and all you have to do is go in here, and let's say I wanna do two plus two equals, and it should solve the problem, and as you can see, it does. And it does this in real time. So for instance, let's try another one that says two plus two equals, it'll show me four again, but if I put parentheses around this in real time and multiply that by two, it'll change it to eight, and then if I divide all this by four, it should give me again the number two. So it starts to read this in real time and it doesn't stop at just regular arithmetic. If you wanna graph something, so again, we'll go back to the old school, y equals two x plus four. It should graph it if it knows what's going on, insert graph, and then it'll graph it in real time, which is so, so cool. I absolutely love this piece about it. Again, I used to do graphing stuff, you know, for fun back in the day, you know, if I do a little parabola plus four, again, so it'll show me a parabola. It'll take a second, hopefully, to figure itself out. We're still in beta, so let's try it again. So it says copy expression, add to existing graph. So then what I can do is go over here and see that it is added to an existing graph. So very, very cool. If you guys are in school right now, this is going to be an absolute game changer and it works with a bunch of different aspects as well. As long as you define your variables and be able to do physics problems, very happy with how this turned out. And then the notes app, we actually got a few other things to take into consideration, which is gonna kind of coincide with the math notes. So first and foremost, the math notes is actually a native thing. So if you're in the notes application, it'll try to solve it. You press solve and then you have your four. But what's also awesome is that it'll fix your handwriting. So if I type in hello and it looks really ugly, You can see that in real time, it's actually changing my handwriting, but not only is it changing it to make it more legible, but it's also keeping my style of handwriting, which I think is very, very cool in how it's able to do that. So it's learning how you're writing, it's learning your actual handwriting, but it is making it a little bit more legible so it's not just chicken scratch. Very cool from the Notes app. And then another thing that the Notes app got is being able to transcribe audio in real time in the Notes app. So if I press record audio, you can actually press this little closed caption button right here, and I'm gonna start recording. And then you can see that in real time, it's going to start to actually dictate what I'm saying instead of just physically recording the action or physically recording what I'm saying. So after this is done, I can press pause and then it'll show up here in a little card where you can actually play it for the audio, but then also interact with it and copy and paste that transcript. So another feature that we got, which I didn't know people wanted, was the ability to lock apps behind Face ID and then also put apps in a hidden folder. So if I long press on this app right here, you get a few options, right? So the first one, we're gonna require Face ID we're gonna require Face ID. So now every time I open up something like Sunsama, it's gonna ask for my Face ID, it's gonna scan it, and now I'm in there. So again, that is what's going on with Face ID, but now if I long press on here, I can actually press don't require Face ID to turn this off, and then long press it again, and then I can press require Face ID, but then it's gonna ask me to hide and require Face ID. 
So give it a second, you get this nice little splash screen. We're gonna press hide app and then the app is gone. So the only way to get to it is go to your app library, go to your hidden, it's gonna ask for face ID and then it shows up and then you're able to access it like a normal application. So that is now part of iOS and iPadOS natively. The next new application that we got is going to be the new passwords app. So if you look down here, we have a brand new passwords app. I'm probably gonna blur everything out here because there's a lot of sensitive information, but essentially Apple broke away the password section of the settings into the actual password application so you can manage and use it as a separate application with a couple extra features, nothing too crazy, but you do have passkeys in here. You have the ability to share your Wi-Fi via QR codes if you want to. It'll give you security warnings in terms of using your same password for the same thing over and over again. So the password app is a welcome addition to iPadOS 18 for sure. And then another cool one actually came to the TV app and it's gonna be coming to tvOS as well, is if you are watching a movie, so let's say I'm gonna turn on Ted Lasso here, let it do its thing. So now I'm watching Ted Lasso on the Apple TV app. There's a little button called Insights here on the bottom left. And it's gonna show you in real time, similar to how Amazon Prime does this. I know Amazon Prime has it already, but it lets you know who's being shown in the video right now. And then actually, as you can see, it got removed. So Nick Muhammad is in there, then Coach is showing up, then Brett Goldstein is there. And you can actually tap on their faces to get information on what other movies are in, you know, what's coming up, what they produced as a writer, guest appearance. And I just like being able to interact with it in real time, which is awesome to see. And the last piece that's awesome that you definitely have to try is going to be being able to take control of somebody else's iDevice, whether it's your iPad or your iPhone via FaceTime. So it's gonna have two different functions and two different ways of doing this. The first one is gonna be being able to share your screen and then annotating it in real time. So let's say you wanna point something out to somebody that needs to maybe click on a certain part of their screen, but they don't wanna give it full control. This is one way to actually kind of help in terms of being able to be your own geek squad and things like that. But then also, if somebody's really having trouble getting something done, or you want to, you know, give control of your device, you can then virtually do that via FaceTime, which is something that has been reserved for some other kind of more enterprise level applications. But now, like I said, you can be the geek squad of your family by showing your grandma or your grandpa how to change your password or how to, you know, move your widgets around or something like that. So those are the 10 things that I wanted to show off. Again, there's a lot more with iPadOS 18. Definitely subscribe to the channel if you guys want to see some more of this stuff, and also consider becoming a member of the channel to get awesome wallpapers like this one, but let's finish up this video and have a lot of fun with iPadOS 18, everybody. Now that would just about do for this video. Like you saw, there's a bunch of awesome new features in iPadOS 18, and here we are just scratching the surface. We haven't even touched on all the Apple intelligence stuff because Apple just hasn't released it yet in the public beta or the developer beta for that matter. So hopefully Apple gives us that very soon because I feel like that's a big part of what this new wave and ecosystem is gonna be like. But other than that, we got some nice tangible features like the new calculator, the math notes, the corrective handwriting, a lot of just like quality of life updates that makes it a little bit more fun to use the already most fun computer in the world at your fingertips. But that's gonna do it everybody. If you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And leave a comment down below of what your favorite iPadOS 18 feature is. Are you downloading the public beta? Is it something you wanna get into? If you've downloaded it already, is it stable enough for you? For me, it's been pretty stable overall, but let me know with a comment down below. That'll do it everybody. And if you guys wanna watch more videos like this one, YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video right here. And if not, click on this video right here for some Prime Day deals that I know are happening soon. That'll do it everybody. Until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace.